This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today, I want to talk about whether your Bitcoin opcode is safe and effective. This is a follow-up to the previous video, Bitcoin Doesn't Need Your Shipcoin or Altcoin to Scale. And in that video, I talked about how blockchains do not scale well and how money is also a winner-take-all game, so that it's doubly silly to assert that Bitcoin needs some shipcoin, some altcoin to scale. Bitcoin will scale using Layer 2 solutions like the Lightning Network and probably some other Layer 2s, as well as a variety of custodial solutions from big banks to community banks to fediments, etc. And in that video, I also spoke about this objection that I was expecting people to say. In that video, I said, but wait, I have this amazing idea for a new opcode that requires a soft fork that will make scaling Bitcoin easy on chain and beyond. That's great, but will your new opcode end up breaking anything? This is my always my main concern. Our primary goal with Bitcoin should always be first to do no harm. Will your new opcode subtly shift the current incentives of node runners, miners, hodlers, etc., that have worked together so well for 16 years to create various equilibria that protect Bitcoin's security? Now, an opcode is just short for operation code. And what it is, is it's just a basic programming function in Bitcoin scripting language, which is called script. Now, adding opcodes, new opcodes, requires widespread agreement in the Bitcoin community to change the code and do a soft fork. In other words, a backwards compatible change to the software. And the longer and more time passes and the more constituencies there are, the more difficult it becomes to change the consensus and include uh, and do a new soft fork, as I talk about in this video, how to make changes to Bitcoin, exactly how Bitcoin consensus works. So I'll refer you to that if you're not familiar with this topic. So not surprisingly, after making that video, I got the kind of comments I was expecting. These are comments from V. Seul. Lightning Network cannot scale the onboarding process. There's not enough transactions per year per person on the planet to lock your Bitcoin in a Lightning channel. Also, you cannot add money to a channel once created. That's actually false, that latter thing, because you can always splice in money, though it does require an on-chain transaction fee. Visul continues by saying, going through banks would eventually lead, go back to a fractional system, defeating the entire purpose, in my opinion. These are the same critiques that have been circulating widely and were most recently in this video called The Lightning Network Has Failed, which I want to make a video about. But here, I want to emphasize opcodes and changes to the consensus. V. Sewell goes on to say, I believe we need new opcodes to enable ZK rollups to protect decentralization. These opcodes are easy to implement and already tested. My response to him, you're just making things up. We have no idea what adding an opcode like this could do to Bitcoin and its incentive structure. That test has not been run, and they're not easy to implement because you need to get people to agree to a soft fork. That's the consensus part that I was talking about. He responded to me or she responded to me, Bitcoin University, I'm not making things up. Opcat is already in the code base of the BTC client. We already have a patch to fix the initial issue with it. Moreover, other Bitcoin sidechains have implemented it and countless ZK rollups exist in Ethereum. We know how to do this stuff. You clearly have no technical expertise and don't work in that space. You ignore Lightning Network limitations. Well, I'm actually quite familiar with Lightning Network limitations. I will be making a video talking about that. I'm also quite familiar with the limitations of sidechains, and I'm very familiar with the limitations of Ethereum as well. So my response to him, no one knows how Opcat rolled out on mainnet will affect the global incentives of how Bitcoin runs. It's a huge change and there's currently no widespread interest in a soft fork that includes this. I know a lot of people like you who have technical expertise, but lack the humility to understand that unknown unknowns exist when it comes to complex decentralized systems. And so these are always the risks of changing Bitcoin software, changing, adding an opcode, and possibly changing the incentives. Fisul responds, Opcat is a really simple instruction. Like all other previous soft forks, you are part of the group that is against every changes. If your group is always against dev proposals, then Bitcoin will die. Well, I'm not sure that's true. If Bitcoin cannot reach the entire planet, it won't succeed. You make me think of people that works in big corporations that never wants things to change and wonder why the company goes bankrupt. Anyway, I know I cannot change your mind, blah, blah, blah. So this is the concern. Something like Opcat actually used to be part of Bitcoin, and then it was removed by Satoshi right before he left the project due to security concerns, as River points out here. It could have been exploited to create infinite loops or large data operations, potentially crashing Bitcoin nodes and preventing new blocks from being processed. Removing Opcat made the Bitcoin network easier to secure an audit, enhancing its stability 
and robustness. Now, the whole point of this video today is not to do a deep dive onto OpCat, but just to talk about it as an example of an opcode that could be introduced. Maybe it makes scaling Bitcoin much better, but maybe it destroys possible incentives and equilibria that exist in the Bitcoin system. So that's what we have to be concerned about. And on that topic, because I'm currently on vacation, I don't have time to do a really, really deep dive on OpCat, and I'm still trying to understand it, I let AI answer this question just to come up with some possible objections, some things that OpCat could make go wrong in the Bitcoin ecosystem. So I just want to touch on a few of these here. The reactivation of OpCat on Bitcoin could potentially hurt the network's incentive structure in several ways. Again, this is an AI-generated answer. Censorship, resistance, reduction, uh, OpCat could enable the creation of complex covenants that might inadvertently or intentionally lead to a reduction in censorship resistance. By allowing more sophisticated conditional spending, it might become easier for entities to restrict or manipulate the flows of transactions. Centralization of mining power, increased transaction costs. I don't want to read all of these. Uh, number four, incentivizing unnecessary complexity. OpCat might create an incentive for developers to build overly complex applications and smart contracts which could lead to a decrease in the overall, overall security and usability of the network. And then I would say number five here would be the one that really jumps out at me, alternative reward structures. The introduction of OpCat could enable the creation of alternative reward structures, such as tokenized rewards or other incentive mechanisms, which might distract from or even undermine the existing block reward structure. This could potentially lead to a situation where miners are incentivized to prioritize certain types of transactions over others, rather than focusing on securing the network as a whole, number six, potential for rehypothecation. So I'll copy paste these, put them in the description notes below so you can read them in depth. But the larger issue here is we have a system that's working extremely well. Bitcoin is extremely robust. It's been resistant to all attacks over the past 16 years. And so we have to be very, very careful introducing new aspects to the software that could somehow compromise that. And I'm not saying I'm against all opcode changes or all soft forks or hard forks going forward, but I think it's something we need to be very aware of and not be cavalier like many of these devs are, just saying introduce it, it's been tested. That's exactly the same thing that Pfizer said about its product being safe and effective, when in fact it was not really tested at all either. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions, comments in the comments section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.